The Biden team can say, well, if things are so bad, how come the stock market's on a roll? Because they think I'm going to be elected. That you think the stock market's rallying because people think you're going to be elected? I do, yeah. You know, that makes no sense at all, right? That the stock market would be rallying in February because Donald Trump might be elected in November and take office almost a year from now. The Dow Jones had another record close today and had absolutely nothing to do with Donald Trump's wild imagination. Here's the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell this week with his take on the economy. This is a good situation. Let's be honest. This is a, this is a good economy. There was even more evidence of that today in the blockbuster jobs report. The U.S. economy added 353,000 net new jobs last month. That's double the number that economists had predicted. Wages climbed to 4.5% year over year. That is higher than the 4.1% that was forecast. The unemployment rate held steady at 3.7%. The unemployment rate has now remained below 4% for two consecutive years. That is a remarkable and rare achievement. Today, President Biden tied the good economy to good policy, saying, quote, it's great news for working families that wages, wealth, and jobs are higher now than before the pandemic, and I won't stop fighting to lower costs and build an economy from the middle out and the bottom up. As for Republicans who might not be listening to the White House, they could very well hear it from an unlikely news source. If you own your home at a low fixed-rate mortgage, 3%, and the, and the value of your home is going up, that is wealth accumulation. And you have a fixed rate mortgage, you have a fixed payment every month, and your wages are increasing, that is extra spending money. Mm. That's how you benefit from inflation. And people are out spending. And the messaging from the RNC has been way off base. Falling inflation and rising growth gives the U.S. the world's best recovery. Steve Forbes with me this morning. I think the Democrats are going to run with that headline. I mean, they're just <laughs> going to plaster this all over the place. But are they right? Is America, does America now have the best recovery? Well, yes. We had a blowout jobs report. More than twice the consensus expectation. Now, I know many of my conservative friends are trying to drill holes in this report. But you know what, folks? It is what it is. It's a very strong report. Mia Copa, I was wrong about the slowdown in the recession. Joining us now for a very short segment, because I don't know what work he's got to do, is Jared Bernstein, the chair of the White House <laughs> Council of Economic Advisors. Jared, they're doing your work for you over at Fox News. Uh, usually someone well, can you know, poke um, holes I, I, in these things, I, I, but they're, they're, they're doing it. Uh, first of all, I want to say that it's it's very possible the stock market's up because they knew I was coming on your show tonight. Uh, so, look, well, we heard we while heard there's nonsense of, in the uh, air, why not add more, right? Uh, we heard we heard a lot of uh, you know honest assessments of what's a, a very strong economy right there, and I I give uh, uh, kudos to folks who are recognizing that. I think it does get a little hard not to see when you've had unemployment below 4% for two years running. Uh, we haven't seen a streak like that since uh, the 1960s. And of course, uh, the big job number uh, today, 353,000, well above what was expected. Uh, it's not the first expectation busting report we've seen in recent uh, months and quarters. As you know, we had the same thing with GDP uh, just a week or so ago. So the American economy continues to defy expectations as Bidenomics continues to grow the economy from, as the president said, the middle out, bottom up. Let's talk about how this happens. You've got a situation in which we had inflation uh, growing at a rate that was faster than wages. Now you've got wages outpacing inflation for several months now. Uh, and you've got low unemployment, you've got more job creation. So people start to feel that. And then they get these phone calls from pollsters or interviewers at the uh, University of Michigan. And, and the consumer confidence numbers start to show confidence. And then people have to talk about it because people talk to one another about it. Uh, and they talk about it on Fox News. And then people realize that they've been hoodwinked a little bit. In reality, a year ago, there was some concern of a, a recession. And it was, it was widespread. It wasn't uh, weird conservative talking points. But now people are understanding that the, the talking points don't match the reality in the economy. 
Uh, exactly. We, we've had a real gap between the kind of economic indicators you and I were just talking about, which have been solid for a while now. I told you about the uh, the unemployment rate staying low for so long. But in fact, wages have been beating prices on a year over year basis for about 10 months now. That's a that's a trend. That's not uh, a, a blip. And it is now factoring into sentiment and consumer confidence surveys in a way that looks pretty uh, reliable. And in, in some cases, using a word that uh, one of the pollsters did today, we're seeing surges. So the uh, University of Michigan survey, a widely watched uh, indicator of sentiment, uh, was up uh, uh, 13 percent in January and 14 uh, percent in, in December, about 30 percent overall. That's a great jump. So we're seeing that in a couple of other indicators as well. It does seem like the, the gains to working families are starting to show up in, uh, in sentiment about how the economy is doing. I want to put up a Quinnipiac poll that talked about the most issued, uh, urgent issues facing the economy. Now, as you and I know, Jared, the economy, is, generally speaking, always hangs around uh, the number one or number two, but it's actually become the number two. And preserving democracy, according to this poll, is uh, the most urgent issue facing the country today. Uh, immigration is, is number three. That tends to be a concern more for people who identify as Republicans than Democrats. But uh, talk to me about the democracy issue and, and how that uh, affects the president and, and the things he talks about, because he's out there talking about the fact that the economy is fine and we can fix it and various people can run it. Uh, but democracy is something that actually might go away this very year. Look, I'm an economist, uh, but when I hear uh, Joe Biden uh, talk about uh, preserving democracy with the urgency, the dedication, the passion uh, that you hear from him on this issue, um, uh, I think uh, it's not only uh, myself, but lots of people are very moved by that. Uh, it's obviously critically important uh, to recognize that ranking that you just showed. Now, look, when it comes to the economy, uh, we know we've got more work to do. We've made real progress. We're going to build on that progress. When it comes to preserving democracy, uh, obviously, that's one of the president's top priorities, uh, and uh, he will continue to push that uh, from any uh, corner uh, where he sees uh, that uh, extremely valuable institution threatened.